My guest is making his second appearance on the pod. He's a comedian and co-founder of Socially Inept Tech Row Show. He's also regular on the Cut YouTube channel and producer of the Crowdwork Show with the Crocodile in Seattle. I'm excited to welcome Jesse Warren. What's up, my friend? Thanks for coming back on, dude. It's been a while, three years, yeah? Yeah, it, uh, I... I was excited having you come over here because it's so much has changed since that time. You're a sociopath, dude. Could you look more delinquent? And also, you, the only thing that's changed is you have more. What are these sound soundboards? What are they called? They're, like sound they're, mufflers. They're like actually. I had to do an arts and crafts project to go and make all these because I tried. I tried to put them on the ceilings because it's such a big space. And it, you can still hear. Some How of do the you echoes. bring a woman back here? Because it looks like you're trying to muffle their screams. That's what it, it like absorb it, all no, their sound. It definitely That's what, does. Doesn't it? Isn't that it's like we're bad. surrounded by them? Also, if anything happens with this episode with the video, I apologize ahead of time. We got we're watching the cameras, but the last episode with uh, Alexa. Sorry about it. The fucking camera turned off in the middle of it. I'm still pissed off about it. And she's great, dude. She's a she, superstar. Dude, she it was such a good episode and she's so expressive and I watched her podcast. Yeah. I, and I messaged her immediately after it. I was like, "Oh, you're like built for this. This is yeah. incredible." She's she's one of like the best hangs to in, in destined for stardom. Yeah. That, I, that girl. I don't like terms like that, but it it, it just sounds I cheesy, know. but I, I know great. you're this is that's part of your goals is what? To, to be a star. I don't know if that's how I would describe my goals. Dude. What are your goals? What are my goals? I have yeah. a lot of my goals. Yeah. But associated with the field we're in. Um how well, do there's you not see just one yourself? there's not just yeah. one field. They're like I I look at this stuff very broadly. I don't I don't because you're probably talking about stand-up comedy. I don't even view myself as like a stand-up comic. Yeah, I wanted to talk about that a little bit. Uh-huh. I thought you just saw yourself as a star. I don't view myself <laughs> as anything of the sort, dude. Because when that camera came on, there was a moment where you were just like, it, I mean, it felt right. I can't help it if I have a star quality that comes out. Yeah. I can't help that. But I don't know. I don't think I'm a star in any way. What do you like? What like what is What's driving you? Is it power? Is it attention? Is it... That response just no. there. I hope, fuck, I'm so glad that was on camera. I don't. The, what you just did was so weird. I'm it's thinking. It's on par with this physical environment that I set up. First of all, no, it's not, dude. It was you, like, we have, you're like, oh, you moan. Can you show people what we have in this area? Because it looks like we'll do you it. have a dog you're trying to keep out of this area, first of all. Yeah. And also. We'll do a clip on Instagram that people can see. And who cares about hockey, dude? What is this place? You have nothing on the walls except one dude. One dude who nobody knows. (laughs) You're like, love this dude. My parents, like, they (laughs) fucking got rid of everything in their house. And I was moving, or like I was, I bought their car and moved back here. It's just like a shitty Civic. Right. And they're like, hey, we're going to get rid of all this stuff. Do you want it? And you're I'm like, yes, for I'm a sure pack selling rat. all of this. Like, I haven't told them yet, but like, to who at like, a garage sale to dude, Dirty that's, Rick that's for seven dollars? That's the 1980 Olympics team picture. That's everybody on the team. Wrong audience, don't dude. I don't steal, know anything about steal this. stuff from my apartment. No, it's like that's a you don't know the 1980 Olympics hockey team. Are you joking? You're joking, right? Because nobody does. They made a movie called Miracle about it. I don't even know what we're talking about. <laughs> There's, if you hate what he just said, make sure for this episode to comment in our comment section. Hit the subscribe button and like. That's a like. It's a good segue. I there. do want to see. I do want to see hockey because we have a hockey local team now. What? Yeah. Uh, the Marinas, the Calvinists. What are they called? Straight up, I actually forgot. But they, they have a cool logo. The we Kraken. Have, Kraken. I want to see it. The Marinas? I, the Kraken? I don't know. I was close. <laughs> I want I want to go see a game and like try to... You're from here. Indoctrinate myself into that culture. I, I don't watch sports. I never went to a sporting game once growing up. I never watched it on TV I once. I can tell because you called it sporting game. What nobody, it, what nobody calls it that. Oh. Yeah, dude. It's not my, it's not my thing. But... Um, what have you been into? Cause, I mean, you... Yu-Gi-Oh! I was the Northwest Pacific Northwest Regional Yu-Gi-Oh! card playing champion in the eighth grade. Okay. Prior to that, I was very into RuneScape. I would invest, like, I was one of those kids who, like, would put, like, clock in 12-hour days in, like, video games. 
dude, RuneScape. We've talked about it out here. Uh, Who with me and you or somebody else? No, somebody else. Oh yeah, um, pussies. I bet they were bad at it compared to. I me. was I was high on RuneScape. Like I w- it was somebody. It was the first like, uh, what what is it? It's not RPG, is it? I think it is classified as that. I, I don't like, know. I don't know. It was like World of Warcraft. Yeah. Without any of the like cool yeah. stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, what was your your what did you do? I would start a bunch of different characters, but my big thing was archery. And um, I also, you know, went on a tangent where I got really into fire making. I made a character who just made fires and I would just walk around just creating fires. Okay. An arsonist in the virtual realm of RuneScape. I was. Did uh, you did you play with real life friends or were all the friends you had? Dude, online? I didn't have real life friends. It's, it's, it was it's sad, Shocking. dude. Yeah. Okay. Shocking. Well, cool, dude. Okay, fine, man. <laughs> Who did you well, talk you were to? Playing, dude? You were playing RuneScape for 12 hours a day and you didn't have a lot of real life <laughs> friends. That's just a reflection on your behavior. Dude, you look like you talked to rocks. What do you what, Who did you talk to growing up? I played drums for like fucking four hours a day. I was telling That's uh, cool. Nick Dundas about this. Like, I, w- I would clock in like that, but would just go down, play drums, and it was, nothing came of it. Like, no when you're doing something, you can just tell, like, no, I, I don't have the chops for this. Like, Dude, I was thinking about this the other day. With stand-up? I, I've had that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I, it's okay, dude. I don't have any ego attached. I view stand-up purely as this tool to get me better at... Uh, a variety of micro skills that will give me the widest breadth of options going forward. Cause I don't know what I want from my life entirely. Okay. So I, I, I think this best strategy when you don't is to cast the widest net mm-hmm. and then optimize for serendipity. I think that you, I think that you can, I hate all these words. I think you using. can count on something to, 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 to manifest itself around you. If you just work hard and cast a wide net with, and I think, I think it'll come to you over time okay. because, because it's getting clearer for me over time. And I mean, this is just so weird. Cause when I started, I was heavily influenced by you. I like, I saw you as somebody that was regularly doing shows, but like you, it was almost like as soon as I started doing comedy at the level that I'm like f- frequency, like taking it seriously. Yeah. Um, you and I, like we went kind of different directions. Like you got into socially inept and you did a lot of improv stuff. Are you still doing improv? Yeah. Multiple times a week. Yeah. How does that feel as a 30 year old? Is it, <laughs> <laughs> it feels great, dude. You fucking idiots don't know what you're doing. Not doing improv. So stupid. yes. And okay. Dude, more. that, joke is so, so lame I hate, I hate it, it. So and the amount of times I hear it from people who think that they're original saying it I don't want to be no, friends no, with no, them anymore no. it's I, I think Nick Dundas did it to me on this podcast and I wanted to just like smack right smack. right I don't I like it. it so much no people but, who do that deserve the death penalty but don't you, you look like you you what was your last meal my you look like meal? you were on the electric chair and then they were like just let him fucking go you look like every face I've seen on the electric chair you look like your last meal. Don't they cover the face? Yeah, but you but you look like so you would like cut blank, out the eyes. I'm just like, a blank face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're a psychopath, dude. You dude, really it, are, man. It I mean, I deal with what I deal with, Jesse. I'm not <laughs> I mean, I'm glad you do, dude. I wouldn't have the stomach for it, man. I, I really couldn't do it. I mean, you don't have a lot of options. <laughs> you deal with fucking True. your your situation. I mean, you you've had some of that recently, right? Like what? you're just like dealing with uh, relationship issues and shit like that. Yeah, totally, man. Because at the time, last time you came through here, I was in a long term relationship. Yeah, yeah. And now you're back to being single. I am. Yeah. How's that? Well, wait. Aren't you seeing somebody? I heard this week you. You kind of, you've been, I mean, there's What are you saying? What uh, what do you say? What do you hear? (laughs) What do I, I mean, I see enough. You always got like, you, you pull some women like you, and I don't know what else you do. I like, I date. Yeah. Yeah. But you, don't you probably not like, it's just difficult. Like having like, 
I don't know. The balance is tough. Sure. Yeah, I don't know. People are averse to it, but I like bring dates to open mics and stupid shit like that. D- how? Like, like all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you? Because I gotta that? do shows every night. Like, so I practice stand up or improv at least seven or six nights a week, at mm-hmm. least. So Why? with that being an unwavering, like I, I will not like compromise on that. So given that constraint, and given that I still would like to date, how do I make that work? Well, the only way is to intertwine the two. Why do you feel like you have to do that six nights a week? Because I'm trying to get better at a skill. And when I try to get better at skill, this I remember thinking this real early, like back when I used to play RuneScape and back when I used to play Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> Dude, I was just I like... I can't believe that I, that just came back into this conversation. It's relevant, dude. I It's very relevant. I don't have any natural ability to do anything. I'm like very just not naturally good at stuff i remember going through like school and stuff and there are people i could see naturals at sports i could see naturals at school and i remember thinking i don't have any of this but i do have one thing that i'm proud of and one thing i'm good at which is just working dumb and hard i'm not even that good at working smart i i just like throw hours into something and then it I tends to work out with that first statement though what which one that you don't have any natural abilities i don't like as far as i can tell what do you think it is i don't i don't see i anything. think like when you take that like dumb and hard work mentality out of the equation for you, you are actually like, I mean, you helped me a lot early on in comedy. Like it was without having you be a presence for me, I would not have probably stuck with this because it just was like, it was an example, but it was also somebody that never brushed me off. Like you, you have the ability to like kind of, Anybody that comes up to you, speak to them. Like it, it, it's not a uh, like levels to it so much. Like I never Thanks, felt man. like uh, you were being an asshole. Dude, this is such a good compliment. Th- thank you. I, yeah. I, but that's I, it's I, kind I, of a skill too. Like it's it's having the right mindset and treating people equally. Whereas, you know, there's a lot of people in this space it's so funny to me the like the ego where it's like no fuck i'm not gonna talk to you i hate it dude they're a they're not funny and b they suck at this like dude it's just not and it's also not a good even if that person is optimizing for their own best interest it is not the best strategy to use because it'll it can only help you to be kind i don't understand it but it is a skill Mm -hmm. similarly it's not a skill that came naturally to me i just i'm just out here observing what people I admire do and what people I don't admire do, I notice this trend that people I admire and that tend to do well, they tend to give pretty freely and openly and um, they don't view themselves as, as higher than uh, other people. Like I'll joke about it. Like some, some people don't, I mean, I think you understand me cause I'll like, I think arrogance is funny mm-hmm. and that's like, sure. Like that's like a, stylistic preference I have sometimes, but I don't think of myself as better than anybody. Um, I do. I think uh, this is weird to like dissect you together. <laughs> dude, I'm, I'm here for it. Dude. Cause you, you, your read on that, that thing, that means a lot to me, dude. So thank you for saying that. And, uh, and it just, it just feels like a good compliment. Yeah, no, it's, I know you play into that arrogance. You 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 have some arrogance to you. Like you have some confident and I mean there were literally you play into it. Uh-huh. It's almost like a character. I think it's type. funny. Yeah, it yeah. is funny. But like the pictures of you flexing with I mean, your I shirt was off. 20, like what if I that? asked you to take your shirt off right now, would you no, do it? No, not a chance. No. You didn't do it yesterday at a show. Dude, okay. Here's the thing about that. And they I'll, I'll admit it. They got me, dude. They got me because they orchestrated a plot. They orchestrated something and they conspired against me. Tell the story. They dude. conspired against me. Who is me. they? What? Rescreen. <laughs> Jack Slattery conspired against me. Nick Dundas, too. Throw that fucking asshole in here, too, okay? I'm taking you all down. They conspired against me because I, I beat Jack Slattery in a roast. Wiped the floor with him, okay? Jack, you never stood a chance. Love you. He's You're- coming here in about <laughs> an hour, by the way, so he can speak on behalf of this. No, he did great. He, we, it was like neck and neck. He was great. Um, and then the winner of that round faced the winner of Reese versus Nick, and Reese did this thing. By the way, I hope um, 
people watching and listening know all of these people that you're referencing. No, <laughs> nobody's <laughs> scum. These yeah. people. <laughs> we love these people. Yeah. Um, uh, and wh- they were like, okay, let's get Jesse to take his shirt off because I'll like draw abs on my stomach. And so, so Reese was like, you should take your shirt off. And then, uh, and then Jack in the back goes, take your shirt off. He starts a chant. Yeah. And now the whole audience is like, take your shirts off. Take your-. And there is a yeah. threshold where if it, nothing, and it was like majority, of, if enough of the audience is like, take your shirt off and you, you don't, do you're, you, you're, it's, you have to do it. Yeah. You just do. I don't want to, but it must be done. Yeah. I'm not skilled enough to diffuse that energy in a way where I don't have to take my shirt off. Someday I, I will be, but to, video today's this not that day. for sure. And I guarantee you that when your shirt came off, there were smiles on your face. Like you miss you. So this, so you were accurate in reading that. You had an accurate <laughs> assessment of me earlier. What was happening now is an inaccurate <laughs> assessment of who I am. I, I think that you might feel one way, but exhibit something externally. I mean, people, it's interesting, dude, because I had, like, I have pictures of me on Facebook, sure, of me doing, like, this amateur bodybuilding competition. When I was 20 years old, dude, I'm yeah. 30. Yeah. 10 years, dude? You don't think, like, people change over the course of 10 That's, years? Yeah, no. I'm, like, a different man, fundamentally. We talked about it in episode six of this podcast. It was three years ago. Yeah. And one of my buddies, I, I meant... We, you you wanted to go through some of the cut video comments today. And like, you did. You said no, no, you were you, like... I said I watched the videos and you're like, we should go through the comments because they're funny. Uh, or like uncomfortable. I mean, it could be a cool game, but I'm cool with whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But my buddy listened to the episode and you had talked about that amateur bodybuilding contest and that picture of you. Right. And he goes, this guy fucking sucks. <laughs> I don't even know how to respond to Dude, it, you know. I bet I did. And looking back, like I, I pro, it would be very difficult for me to listen to myself on a podcast from three years ago because I, I and I because I was not skilled at all. I was like very. I don't know. Do how you to, remember I what you did before you came? In? I didn't know how to talk. I didn't know how to talk. And I hope I'll say this before we move on to what you're saying. I hope in three years, I can't listen to this. Yeah. There's only two. There's two. How do you think I feel? I couldn't if you played episode one for this. I, 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 I imagine you. I imagine you'd be pretty ha- uh, happy, dude, because you haven't progressed. So you see yourself as <laughs> yeah, like this, yeah. th- this thing. You'd be like, oh, that that was pretty good stuff. But I, uh, you know, I'm stratospheric, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Exponential growth over there. Yeah. No, I feel. But that, that's a good sign, right? It's like, on the one hand, it doesn't feel good to cringe at past work, but the alternative is much scarier because if you're not cringing at it, it means you're stagnant. Oh yeah, so you know, pick your poison. What the fuck was I saying though? I, I'm sorry. God damn it! It's probably shit, right? Stupid. Glad we missed it. Was it? I even tried to put a pin in it, dude. I my memory is so bad. That's yeah. one of the things I have to I work mean, on. I mean, I don't these. even know this about you, but how many whippets have you done in your life? It's so many, probably. You look like everybody who does dude, so was... many whippets. Did you do them? Yeah, for like, <laughs> I thought you knew. I thought we had already talked about it before. I don't think no. We like towards the end of me, just getting uh, like at the worst of my use, it was just like a two month period of me doing them every day. Dude, you look like the poster boy for weapons. I did them for the first time like a, a couple months ago. Aren't they awesome? It's incredible. It's so good. I had no idea. Where did it was you like do them at? Uh. Uh, one of our you, pa- you're I, I squared up, right? I don't want to say, I don't want to say his name, but he had some at his house and we were chilling, dude. We were drinking, we were getting ready to go to this, um, this gay club and we, he offered me, I was scared. Wait, where were you going? A gay club. Okay. And, uh, that's we, fine. We, I just, I, I thought you said gig club. No, no gig club. We had a couple girls with us. He, he introduced me to, his, uh, he's seeing this girl. He introduced me to a friend and. Uh, I was chilling, dude, and I I like I I will do any drug once. Mm-hmm. Uh, truly, I think any drug because um, I'm curious, and that's one I hadn't tried yet. And boy, it was cool. To, and it was fun. Like your voice changes. I was like wow, 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 wow. Like your voice gets deep. I was like doing. Oh, like, I just voices. remembered what it was. What? 
You did voice exercises before you came on the episode. I did them before this episode. Did you seriously? I do them before every single God time. damn it, Jesse. I thought that was going to stop. Mm-mm. I've done them. Not only has it not stopped, it's gotten... I, I rely on them even more heavily. Can I, you I, do one uh, right now just to yeah, show... Dude. Yeah, Betty bought butter, but the butter was bitter, so Betty bought better butter to make the bitter butter better. Talk did to you do this in the car to begin to toboggan first by? Yeah, yeah. To begin to toboggan first by, toboggan bit no by too big, toboggan too big, toboggan too big, toboggan too big, to begin to toboggan. I I'm, I'm probably couldn't do it that fast early. Yeah, I did a bunch of tongue twisters and, you know, stuff like, just like, it just, it helps, dude. I take this seriously, man. I take, the, I take, even though you, you have so few <laughs> listeners, I take this very se- seriously, man. I, I want to take all of this you, seriously. You started off by saying that I, I'm a sociopath. You are. That 30 second clip of you making this <laughs> face is the creepiest thing that I've had on I here. Mean, I, I have met, I have so many memorized of tongue twisters. Oh yeah. my God. Where did you learn these? I remember I started. Can you imagine if you did those on whippets? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Whippets are so. I just had a flashback to when I, I did one and I was just like sinking into the couch. And Could me and my you friend were just sound? smiling at each other. Oh, I couldn't see sound, dude. Oh, if you do them enough, like I didn't do that, man. I just did a, a few, and I like pasted it out. Yeah, you like you have to do them, sort of like you get the canisters and you just go back to back to back to back, and because you know how it, it's it lasts like not long at all. Right? No, that's why I could, that's why I could never get it. It's too but short. It, it's the intensity never really wavers if you keep banging them. Oh my so, god, like, you're you a just, monster, dude. No, but it it was like. I was at such a delusional point that I didn't know any different, right? right? And it was, I also was injured. So like I had really bad, uh, I had been in an accident, like my neck was all fucked up. And I knew that like it helped with that pain. So right. it was just like. So let's fix this concussion with like another form of concussion. Let's damage my brain from I, the outside and I didn't and the even inside. think, I mean, to this Is day, this why I don't you're really dumb? think. Or no? I'm not, I mean. No, stop, dude. I, I, I don't think, think there's a dumb. lot of reasons for that. I think you're, you're, <laughs> I you're think very smart. I don't think we can smart. put that on whippets. <laughs> I wasn't going to put it wholly on whippets. I was going to split the blame between whippets and how many concussions you obviously got oh, by, yeah. by... What did you do? I had a lot of concussions before that, too. Jesus, like you're a monster, yeah, dude. I've had 10. You're joking. No. By the time I was 18... You yeah. really are a, a character, man. That's there's however I'm going out isn't gonna be great. <laughs> a lot of like I'm just gonna end up doing some just wild shit. Oh, me too, dude. Whatever takes me out, it's definitely gonna be some form of like uh, drug and like stimulant induced like mania. I'm gonna do some shit like, dude, my idol. This it'll be just like this, dude. My idol, Greg Plitt, when I was growing up, he was this fitness model and. Um, Scott, <laughs> he he like broke the record for how many skydives like one man did. He like it was like thousands or something. He was your idol. Yeah, I was like seventeen. Greg played fitness model and skydive extraordinaire. He he was like he was on the cover of Men's Health all the time. He he won like sexiest man alive or something. He died. Why are sexy men so important to you? I think it's because I, I I wish I knew, dude. I wish I, I wish I didn't care about trying to optimize for being desirable but i i can't help it it doesn't seem to be harming me too much it doesn't seem to be harming anybody else but don't you think your desire to be optimi- optimally beautiful i mean not beautiful i'm not i don't view myself like a beautiful man how, how do, do you view you yourself? as a beautiful man you fucking sexy piece of meat I, dude i know you you're, you're but but you i feel like you always looked like this so t- to me i was I had a phase in my life. I, well, actually, you were fat. But see, that's... I would trade my scenario for that scenario because I was too skinny. I got bullied for being skinny. I was the skinniest kid in my class, and I was just gross. I was gross, and I got no attention for so long. And I yeah. remember seeing everybody else around me start to like talk to girls and like hug them, and I got none of it. So I think that just kind of stays with you. And now you're like, it's like vengeful. Like you're like, no, not fucking gun. Go back. No, no, no. It was I'll first. Take <laughs> these girls who didn't appreciate me. <laughs> it was when I was like in a teenager, but no, that's okay. That's how it that's starts. Honestly, like, like when you were in your twenties and stuff and just like, just, I mean, you were going after no, when it, I was like, like 17 to 19. That's for sure. That was 
That was I felt the, like you just flexed as you were saying. That. Dude, yeah, I did. I mean, I can't help but flex. It's just like natural to me now. But I was that was my I I I firmly believe this. I think if you don't start working out because of something extremely toxic, it you will not sustain the habit. If you like are like I want to do this for longevity, you're done. You're going to go to the gym for a month and then you're going to stop. But if you start because like you have a, a woman <laughs> broke your heart and you're like, I'm going to, ch- I'm going to fucking go change myself right now. Then, then you have a sh- you're fighting shot of making that a lifelong habit. Cause now I don't think about that shit at all. It's just like who I am. I, yeah. I exercise every it's day. It's just fear of getting back to that point. It, it's even more than that. I just do it like unthinkingly. I exercise every day. I have every day for 15 years. But what, what's your goals with it? I don't think do you, about do it. Do you think you're progressing in your health and fitness goals? That was the most boring podcast <laughs> question I've ever heard in my life. I mean, you change it up, right? So like I, I stopped getting stronger. So I changed, I started doing calisthenics. So now my goal is like, can I do these crazy feet? Like I can like walk on my hands now. I never mm-hmm. used to be able to do that. So you have to, you have to have some form of like, I have to have some form of visible progress and you can only there are diminishing returns for strength gains. Mm -hmm. So I'll always be changing it up after this. Maybe I'll do like jujitsu or something, something like I just got to keep it fresh. I don't think about getting bigger. I don't care about like getting more ripped or anything. I don't think about stuff like that. So what, how do you measure it? Like you, you find new metrics. So handstand, how, how long can I stand on my hands without falling? How How, far can I walk? How long is it now? I can do, I've like topped out at like, 30 to 40 seconds. Really? Mm-hmm. We should get a clip of you doing we, we that should before, not. before I mean, you leave. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I can do it pretty well, but I've only been doing it for like a year and a half. But it's fun for me. It's still fresh and fun. Dude, calisthenic, like I, I'm not trying to make this episode into like a workout podcast, but like it is, there's videos on YouTube of people that do that shit. And it's, it's unbelievable. Yeah, I love it, dude. I think it's really impressive. There's this guy in Brooklyn that just has like, all he has is a fucking like pull up bar, essentially like an outdoor one, like a two uh, triangular. I'll, I'll find the name of the video, but like two triangular poles and then one across the middle. Right. So it's like a true. Yeah. 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 Bar. I gotcha. And he has a fucking chain to a cinder block. And that's all the equipment yeah, he uses. Dude, yeah. And he can do those, the flags where they're like yeah. horizontally yeah. raised. I'm trying to learn it. Dude, have you ever seen somebody do it in person? Yeah, I had a friend who could do it. It's really cool. How do you, like, what are you even doing? I, I, can, I can do it with my legs tucked for one, like one second. Okay. But, but what it, part of your body right, is it's interesting. engaged? It's different than you think. It's the, I would think it's core. It's and the it, whole thing. That's really? the crazy. You're, you don't think about this, but you're pushing and pulling. So your bottom hand is pushing and your top hand is pulling. So I'm like pressing, doing a pull up and then your whole, your whole core. It's, it's insane. I don't know. The reason why I had to stop doing calisthenics was like two things. Number one, I felt like without like additional, um, weight, it was really hard to get stronger. Yeah. Like you, you, you kind of, there's, you tap out, yes. like you're just exhausting yourself. Yeah. And then two, it was super easy to get injured. Like mm. the, any of those motions, like you're, there's so much connective tissue and, and like angles. Right. And all that yeah. It's easy to like kind of, uh, I don't know, just Dude, slip. The, well, what cured that for me is I do yoga three times a week now. I don't even strength train that much. I mostly do yoga now. Mm -hmm. Keep it fresh, dude. I, I want to like just keep doing new stuff. And I know you're, I know you think what it's gay. No, I, 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 cause sometimes you'll say that word and I can see it in your eyes now. No, no, you said that word in episode six when you saw the picture of me and I said, what are you, you, what are you doing saying that? I don't think I don't, that sounds yeah, like me. Yeah. God and damn. then you said it again on this one, hundred episodes later. But no, I don't. I don't. I like yoga. I just it's been so long since I've been able since, since I've had the time to do it. Right. And it's, it, dude. It's I need to. There. Yeah. That's what I learned going to New York. Like I, I mean, you've been there quite a few times, and I I talked about this with Alexa, but like. 
Dude, I have to change everything I'm doing, like, after going to New York. What, in your life, stand-up-wise, or what? What are you talking about? Um, yeah, like, I, I have some big issues I need to fucking deal with, huh. and um, I think it's, like, I think I have um, OCD, and I think I have yeah. an anxiety disorder. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised. And it's, I think doing some of this, like podcasting, doing stand up or whatever, it gives me a sense of like relief that I'm like progressing towards something. Yeah, dude. But it's also a way of like avoiding dealing with these issues. Yeah. And I, I like going to New York, it made it like kind of forced me to think about things differently. And, and I don't know, it was, it was an extremely, it, the craziest thing is Wilfred, like he came on, he came on a second time because he had been on before, but like he was talking to him really, um, just, I learned a ton, like just seeing, uh, his mindset and where he's at with stuff and being in that environment and that environment being such a, I mean, it's, it's this huge maze you get to get sure. through. And, yeah. and he's a, like a really good place with it, but yeah, yeah. I, I mean, that game scares me so much, man. I, it looks like a fun game to play. I think the landscape's changing a bit where you have other alternatives. So you don't have to play that game if you don't want to play it. I think the internet's pretty cool. And, and with, with the number of different games you can choose to play now. Yeah. I uh, felt that way, but then I went out there and I really, uh, I think somebody like you, someone like me, would have no did did you know uh Gilberto Soto mm -hmm. he was out here uh, I think he may have been in Tacoma but I met him doing shows Burungi introduced me to him and like dude if you have if you want to get better at what you're working on and you're you know supportive person it's it's a playground like it's yeah. it's, it's it looks fun and it's not um I think the main thing is if you're brand new, it's not a super yeah. conducive environment yeah. to getting better. But yeah. It's at a certain point you've gotten the most out of uh, some of the, I mean, anything, I mean, anytime you travel, I'm sure you feel this way when you like perform other places, you learn so much being in new places. So I do think having home clubs, having like home rooms, like just being a place where you're comfortable and yourself is good, but then going other places and like, you know, yeah. seeing where you're making assumptions that are fucking you. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I think it's valuable. Um, I know, I think we've talked about this. I think we differ in opinion a little bit about how essential it is, just based on what I've seen with um, what people are able to do with content and the internet and getting feedback from a global audience while staying local. Mm -hmm. I think it's very interesting. I also think that like B markets like Seattle have are an interesting landscape for making a living through creative means of producing shows mm -hmm. and creating your own opportunities. Well, you guys just had like a really successful month, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was talking with Nikita Oster, who's a very funny comic. He will be on the podcast at some point. Um, Good man. He's going through some stuff right now, but uh, yeah. how's, how's socially and up going? It's good, dude. We just um, did our first 600-seat theater. Where was that at? The Egyptian Theater, Seattle. Um, and then we, we've been selling out. And then the next milestone, the next week, we did our first... Where is the Egyptian? Capitol Hill. Where, like, what street is it on? I don't know. It's I across just, the I street from Cal Anderson. I didn't know it was there either. Yeah, I, I just... I had no idea. A big, big, big theater, dude. It's like a real, like, theater. They mostly do movies and stuff Congratulations. There. Thanks, man. It How was great. It, go? it was good. It was good. It wasn't our best show yet, but it was, I was, it was a, it was a milestone. Uh, like you said, it, it, there's a bunch of variables that, that made it a little more complicated, but our next show in Silicon Valley, we did the next week. And that was the first show we did without paying for any advertising. Sold at 200, 200 really? seats. And that's testament to TikTok. So we sold that, that show up because uh, we've been posting clips to TikTok and Austin's been making like tech bro specific TikToks and we're just learning so much. Like you can build this audience from literally wherever. And Austin is doing this for himself too. So he has his following cause he, 
He has like over half a million followers on TikTok because of his impressions. They're yeah. stellar. And now he's just booking. He booked uh, a room in New York, 150 seats. Mm-hmm. He's going there in two weeks. It's already sold out. And he did a show in Seattle because he already has followers there. And where he did, did he 60, do that? Where in New York? No, we're here. Rendezvous. He did oh, a 60 okay. seater and he sold it out. Uh, but it's really cool. You can just do this thing the way you want to do it yourself as long as you have uh, people who care about what you do. And I don't think I'm there yet. He always talks to me ab- about this and like, you're like, well, you, you, you cap out on your skill and you have to go to a new city. I don't think I'm even close to being good yet. I don't think I'm close at all. At what? All of it. I, 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 I mean, don't. What do you, what do you like doing most? I like it all, but I, I think my ideal case scenario is literally this is having conversations and exploring things and having them really open-ended and, and my first love is, uh, self-help. Like that's like the thing that's like been the only consistent through line in my life. So I care about comedy, stand up and improv and, um, producing my shows. It's kind of like crazy. Improv. They don't have a section at like Barnes and Nobles for self harm too, you know, like <laughs> <laughs> here's the best this, way to do it. This is how you fuck up your life. Completely. Yeah. And it's just like, a bunch of memoirs from like musicians and shit that got addicted. To I mean, drugs. yeah, dude, just read any like fucking autobiography of like an actor. That's pretty yeah. much that same thing. Yeah. You don't think that you would be a successful actor. Like you, you wouldn't, I have no desire to act that, like in film or TV shows. I mean, I would do it. I would do it. Um, cause I think you would be a, like a very strong actor. I've always thanks. felt that. Wow. Way. It, Thanks, dude. It, uh, I mean, you can do some kind of reel right now if you want for the camera. If you want to, all right, give character. me a, okay, give me a character. To, Let's try insecure and, um, let's see, actually, just an insecure artist. Hey, do you want to, um, listen to my mixtape? You don't have to, you don't have to if you don't want to. Um, but if I've been working really hard on it and, oh no, it's okay. You have somewhere to be. That's, that's fine. Uh, it was nice meeting you. (laughs) I did. Do you take back your opinion? No, look a little bit. (laughs) I I also like, I meant like visual artists. I love that you just immediately assumed like you would be a rapper if you were an artist. I mean, I have the demeanor of a rapper. Well, you used to freestyle before shows. Do you remember that? You used to. Do you bro? still freestyle? Not really anymore. Uh, I mean, for fun, I do. Yeah. Hold no, on. no, on. dude, no. Hold on. Let yeah, me, I don't want to freestyle. Hold on. Let me just play fucking maybe. Let me just play something and see if if, if you do, uh, you have to agree that you'll cut it out if it isn't no, to my liking. No, that I, I refuse to. <laughs> oh. Wait, there's all Dude, weird... I don't want to rap. You, just, you don't have any. This isn't. Not this check, one. You check. want something else? This is like cluttered. Okay, hold on. Turn that up. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Dude, I, you have to cut it out if I don't like it. Give me a word. I'm gonna let you do this. Give me a word. Give me a word. Cheese. Cheese. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Could I have some cheese, please? I'm begging on my knees. I need to fulfill this need for cheese. I'll take it any way. I could have it sprinkled on top of a pizza or maybe on a potato. I made you. A cheese box for lunch because I love you. I packed you a bag lunch. I hope you go off to work and think of me. I wrote a note in it. It says I'm thinking of you. So when you eat this Gouda, I hope you're feeling good. Uh, I hope you're feeling good. Uh, that's it. It wasn't terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun, dude. It's fun for me. 
shout out to Tyree for the beat. I was I was supposed I like to that have beat. uh yeah, that dude's awesome. Um supposed to have on this musician from Seattle and was gonna have her because she does like soul freestyle. Cool. And incredible, but maybe in the works. Um we were fucking talking about socially and app and jumped off it. Like so you can build an audience through TikTok, you can do do all yeah, that shit. Yeah, so it's just showing me the, the what what what's possible with um when you just have people care about what you put out online. I think that there's nothing more important. Well, that's not true. There are different paths to doing what you want to do, but this seems to me if you're optimizing for optionality, which I am, I want to have options. I think I think it's a good move. My hesitancy with it, and I think where I've like run into walls, at least with this podcast, is creatively, I I don't want to be branded as something. Like, and a lot of times, in order to get stuff to sort of work at the scale you're talking about, you need to be the blank guy. Sure. And I would kill myself if I was going in to perform somewhere and they're like, this is the so-and-so guy, like hmm. do the, do the, hmm. the catchphrase. Or oh whatever. my gosh. Well, Austin's suffering from that. Cause people are like, it's the Trump impression guy. I mean, yeah. Does it, does he hate it? He, it makes I him mean, very sad sometimes, yeah. but it also has created opportunity beyond his, his wildest dreams for him. But so, you're literally like a fucking dancing bear. It's like, do well, the you don't have to trick. do it. You don't have to do it. But and if you don't, it's going to piss off. I mean, you're, well, it depends. You have true fans and you have like these tangential fans who care about a specific thing you do. So you're always, I think, always going to build an audience that's a mixture of both. And the ones that care about you will care about whatever you do. I think that's true. It's, it's hard though. I don't know. I I mean, Joe I'm Dombrowski not doing. It. I can't. Has I, I can't the do same it. situation, right? Like he, you know, Joe, yeah. right? Like he had that video go viral, and he's got a shitload of the Ellen video. I don't know. Uh, I know. He was. Um, he had a like a viral video. It got him on Ellen and stuff, wow. and it was a specific like to teaching. So he has this audience, and I. Nice. I have to imagine at times you're like, you love some of those people. Then at other times you're like, I want to do this thing. That's not related to this character. You can grow it though. You don't, I don't think you have to pigeon your whole pigeonhole yourself, but also I don't know what I'm talking about because I'm not yet doing this. I'm just, you've had success on cut. Like that's, that's one of the things. I mean, what is success on cut though? Like what? It is. I mean, dude, the, the videos that you've had on there, it's, if anybody watching is on YouTube or whatever, make sure to check out yeah, these videos. Anybody aged like eight to fourteen, if you're out there and you <laughs> and you love great. that type of content. No, it's some of the stuff that you have with your parents is really good. The Thanks. stuff with uh, your ex, it, it, but like you have this this presence already on there. Why haven't you tried to like utilize that? Like I said, and this is the same reason Austin gets mad at me. I don't think I'm ready for anything. I think I'm not very skilled at most things. I think the tech roast, socially inept, is it's such a niche intersection between tech and comedy where I think, okay, I don't think other people in the world, I think I'm in this very small sphere, I think I'm a competent person. I think I can do offer something that's pretty novel. But in like the sphere of stand-up or like, content creation i don't think i'm i'm skilled enough to 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 say that i'm offering anything of unique value hmm. so what have you been doing the past 10 years <laughs> i've been working man I, I don't i don't take many days off i've been uh trying this, to... this is what i understand though you're one of the hardest working people i know without a job yeah yeah like that doesn't make what do you work? I mean, on? I'm addicted to work, dude. I, like, no matter what, and those are, I I love work. It's like how I escape my demons. Yeah, I think you're in the same space that I am in terms of needing to look at some stuff different. Oh my god, I I mean, I couldn't agree more, dude. Like everything I'm doing, I mean, I st- you can you can look at them differently 
you can look at stuff differently and simultaneously simultaneously pursue them right so like this is something i've been trying to reconcile it's like it's very clear to me that every skill i've chosen in my life i've chosen because it it offers a mode of protection to me so when i first got into bodybuilding i was like i to me it was like this shell i could i could build I this can't suit of armor handle how we we just keep coming back to your body <laughs> It's a work of art. I don't know what else to say about it. No, that's not. That's not the point. The point is this. The point is, I did. I I got into it because I was deeply insecure, uh, and I and I thought it would offer me protection. Because I remember always thinking as a child, people were looking at me and judging me. I don't think that they were. I don't think anybody even paid attention to me. But in my head, I had this like distorted view. Do you Um, think it was because they didn't pay attention to you? Probably, yeah, yeah. It was probably that. Is probably a combination of that and just the way I was raised. And uh, I'm starting to realize the more people I talk to, the way that I was raised was different than the way most people was Same. raised. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You think, it's, dude? It's a uh, no. It's a very. I mean, your dad is pretty successful, right? I, well, I mean, what do you mean successful? I think he's a a good man. I think he's a really good man. Yeah. I mean, just from a. Uh, uh, societally perceived like, yeah i think so yeah i mean you don't i don't want to get super into details but like having someone that's that way in my life too like it's it's really it puts you in a weird place where like your successes never seem to measure up and see, see i don't have that because you, yours is a anomalous case me and my brother are both this the day we graduated college had earned more money than my father Hmm. Interesting. Ever did in his whole life. Ever did in his whole life. And 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 my mom. We the first day we graduated, we we like were societally more successful than either of them. Huh. I didn't realize that. Yeah. Yeah. I guess you're just better than your dad, right? (laughs) (laughs) No, I think he's a. I think he's a really good man. But I don't. I don't know him as well as I would like to. And he didn't grow up with a dad. So that when I realized that that might explain why he was a little like more. He wasn't like this. We just don't. We just never talked about well, that much stuff. Watch the fucking video on cut. The two of you guys, like, there's such an, uh, a gap in terms of... And I think... I mean, I did an episode on here with my dad. And yeah. uh, John Gardner, like, listened to him. He's like, dude, the way you talk to your dad is so weird. Like, it's yeah. like you have, like, a working relationship yeah, yeah, with him. That, and yeah. I, I, like, I didn't even think about it, But every... Like, growing up, I would, like, go in... If I needed to talk to him, I would go into his office and like, it would basically be like, Hey, I'm, it's a pitch. Right. Essentially. Right. And, and so like now as an adult, if I ever had to do that in work settings, like I feel comfortable, more comfortable with like executives than I right. do around like anybody else. One, yeah. I, I didn't have that exact thing, but I relate to that. I just didn't talk to my, either of my parents. If I ever had a problem. I've never once brought a problem to either of my parents in my entire life. Just fucking worked it on a rinse scheme. Yeah, I don't. I guess I don't even know. It's probably still like boiling in me. Yeah. Uh, so no, it for sure is. Well, but why? Why I was talking about this was because okay, bodybuilding. It's like this form of protection, and then that didn't offer as much protection as I thought it would. Like, because when you talk to people, they can still hurt you with words. So stand up. Nobody can hurt you if you're good. Improv. If you're good at these things, if you can carry yourself in these social contexts, because social contexts scare me. They used to. They still do a little bit, but not to the extent that they they did. You have a a much better shot at not at holding your own um, and protecting yourself. So it's all just a defense mechanism. And and so whatever I'm trying to protect. So you can either like work through the core issue or you can kind of create these like surface level solutions to them. And that's what I've been doing my whole life because I didn't know that there was like this underlying root issue. But now I don't actually think it's bad to pursue something because of like you're trying to protect yourself, but you should also be simultaneously trying to work at the root issue. So that's my new thing is like, I'm trying to attack from both directions. Yeah. No, I, I think, uh, I couldn't agree more. I mean, it's, because you wouldn't guess this by talking to you, dude. But you're you. I I I've seen you so many contacts, man. You maybe even more than me. You you have social anxiety. Yeah, I'm working on it. 
it's really bad. Yeah, I, 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 I know. I don't know many people who have it as bad as you. Yeah, it's, uh, I think... I've seen you get really uncomfortable in social context, really uncomfortable. And there are things that wouldn't have, didn't affect me at all, but I was like, oh, wow. I, don't, I can see how that's affecting Adam. I know this sounds fucked up, but, like, most of it, I think, stems from boredom. Like, if I'm around people that are really funny, like, on kind of all the time, I don't feel that way at all. Like, Thomas Nichols is somebody that I could talk to for hours. Because he's always on? Dude, he's he's always cracking jokes. Whereas, See, like, that stresses me out. I, can't, I don't want to be around anything like that. It's not force, though. It's just, like, he finds so much funny like yeah. it's it's just that's cool everything like funny. and he he roasts people and he does that but he does it in a way that like it's so tasteful like it's not nice. there are people that are roasting you for them and there are people that are roasting you for you you know mm-hmm. like it's a there's a delicate balance there yeah roasting is an art man and i think like i don't know going to new york i realized a lot of what you were talking about it I was forced to be around people. It's funny that you bring up the social anxiety. I, the first couple of days that I was there, I thought I was having a fucking anxiety attack. I believe it, dude. I mean, that and, city for, for somebody with social anxiety. And just like being around that many like comics that I don't know and all that shit. Dude, it's like, you talking about, it, I'm having like a reaction to it right now. But it's it very scary. It forced me to deal with it. And I realized like most of what that is, is I moved around a lot when I was a kid. I was around a lot of new people and when I'm around new people, I go into like into myself and stay quiet because I had people bully me and I had people like I was the new person. They'd be mean to me and it would hurt. So I would like, it's natural when I'm around a group of people that I don't trust completely. I just, I'm like, I disassociate. It's a protective yes, thing. Yes. Yes. 100%. But when I was there, I realized, and it helped me a lot with like, Stand up is I earn that spot in that circle just as much as anybody else. Nobody is above or below me. I'm part of that circle. And the people that try to make you feel like you're not allowed to be there, that has nothing to do with you. And that's that's something that I'm like working on as a person where it's there's a lot of that just like cutting you down and not just in creative space, like just in life in general. Yeah. And dude, it has nothing to do with like those people that like target it, it's a shitty thing to do it sucks but the one thing that i'm realizing is it's not worth losing out the new people that you can bring into your life because of those like bad actors and it's it's a it's crazy it took me this long in my life to realize that and it's yeah. also something that i actively have to like work on because yeah. it's Part of the reason why I think I have to make a change is this situation here, like this comfort of me being by myself and me mm. like having my space and, I mean, and all that. Yeah, like, me too, dude. It's hurting me. It's mm. it's like it's it's whatever you're talking about with bodybuilding. And I think whether right, getting stop a roommate being, bring up bodybuilding, dude. It's, okay, I'm not trying to talk about that. But anymore. I like, dude, it's these things that you feel it's like eating fucking ice cream or whatever like it feels good it makes you feel more comfortable yeah. and then eventually like you're owned by this thing yeah and you know you hate fat people i <laughs> and, <laughs> are you talking about you do dude because you hate who you are you I, like you that's what you are you're a fat guy who isn't fat anymore and you hate yourself for it's, it. it's i was never fat so i have nothing against fat people that's fair all right um you wanted to bring on a story isn't that, I I mean I have isn't that what you're th- is that how you sag into it? Yeah, that's what we're that's what we're gonna do. Um, okay. Oh, I thought that just said we didn't have any fucking storage on this. I was gonna lose my mind. Um, yeah, that would have been sad. We got the, some segue music. The red but, light's still on. Yeah. Before we do that, though, um, you want to tell the people to like, share, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Just look into the camera. Yeah. Look. The, the lens, not the oh, right. picture of yourself, because I know you love that. Look, um, if you've enjoyed anything so far, um, make sure to uh, ignore any future content. Make sure you block this user. Don't, if you follow them on Instagram, unfollow, because it's really going to hurt you going forward. Um, 
make sure to disassociate with f- friends of Adam. Like if you know friends of friends, if you're any it's at all tangentially related to Adam, don't talk to those people anymore. Don't basically rid yourself of any and all connection to Adam and you'll be better for it. I don't think your microphone's on. <laughs> you <laughs> no, get serious? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Thanks for doing that. Of course, uh, it's, yeah. You're my friend. And like, share, and subscribe. Oh, that's it. Right. <laughs> like, share, and subscribe. It's story time. It's story time with Adam. Yeah, it's story time. It's story time with Adam and friends. hear it do you know what Yu-Gi-Oh is yeah uh, the, the card game roughly the card game it's like you know you this know Pokemon is the story I, I I'm intrigued <laughs> I just I was not expecting it you know Yu-Gi-Oh yeah yeah the card game it, did you ever play Pokemon or anything I played Pokemon right so like Pokemon players would look down on Yu-Gi-Oh card players like Yu-Gi-Oh was like bottom barrel there's a hierarchy right Magic the Gathering was like obviously like the coolest card game mm-hmm. and then it was like pokemon and then digimon whoever the fuck played that yeah but then at the then like at the very bottom it was Yu-Gi-Oh. It, we were the scum of the card playing community and but that was my credential i was the northwest regional Yu-Gi-Oh card playing champion and i would practice every day dude i took it to take it so seriously uh that was eighth grade and then i went to high school and it became how do you practice Yu-Gi-Oh? So there's a card shop, local card shop called Sports Card Mint. And in, ev- in Shoreline? In Bellevue. Every day after school, I get my my mom to drop me off. She'd pick me up from school. She wouldn't take me home. She'd drop me off at Sports Card Mint where a bunch of degenerates. Like when you're co- at the competitive level, you're not playing against like kids. You're playing against like 40-year-old year, year old men who are like... Who are re- into some weird shit, and I didn't know it at the time. I just thought these were like grown ups, but no, they're like they're like freaks, dude. There, there were characters. There was one ma- one guy named Sam. I forgot his last name. Who, who was like every day he would be like, oh yeah, I got a dip. I, I'm gonna go out on a date with a woman and, and like hook up with her. Date on a woman. I, I got to go like hook up with these chicks and uh, closeted gay man the whole time. Like the, he was just like deep. And I had no idea. I just was like, wow, this guy loves women. But um, <laughs> Like found him on How Facebook like years later. Like, were, you, were you just like the ultimate competitor or were you? There were like two or three of us who were young and precocious Yu-Gi-Oh card players. So my fr- I was sh- my friend, Austin Coleman, went on to be the national card, national Yu-Gi-Oh card playing champion, flew out to Japan to represent the country and made a, li- like you think making it comedy is hard. He's a professional Yu-Gi-Oh. He owns a card shop. He like gets interviewed for all these card magazines uh, he's like anybody in that space knows who he is. Mm-hmm. So, and he was, he was younger than me. So he like, we would, we would go to this card shop and we would play for hours and hours and hours. And then we would go to each other's houses for like sleepovers and we just stay up into the night, just getting reps in dude, practicing. It's like, play this, play this, play this, play this, try different styles. And then I would go home and I go on the internet, study tactics, tactics, tactics. So I got really good at it. Um, but then I went into high school and, in middle school, it didn't matter. People just ignored you for it. But in high school, I started to get bullied for it. It like graduated to this thing that like warranted bullying. And I didn't really see the path that it was like, I didn't like the path that it was going down. I said, cause the future was like literally the future, like those characters in the card shop. There's one guy with the greasiest hair and, um, lice lived in it. You could see them moving around. Ugh. Every time I saw him, it, there were like things moving in his hair and you, it was so greased that you could see his scalp. And there's another man who was so fat that he stayed in the corner. So everybody like went around to duel people in different corners of the card shop. He wouldn't he, move. He wouldn't, he, every, you had to go to him because nobody saw him get up ever. I think he just like passed out there at night and then you'd, you'd wake up and then you'd duel him and he'd never move. I think he's dead. I don't know. It wouldn't be shocking. Yeah. He is. Uh, yeah. And then, then it was me. My brother played a little bit, but he never got that deep into it. But Austin Coleman was was really good. And then I know another guy in my posse, Jonathan Weigel, who's good. He's a DJ now. 
And Austin is a part-time actor. So it's interesting how these people who like got into card playing ended up doing these like great, I know, creative pursuits. I know several professional gamblers, like full-time players that play Yu-Gi-Oh. Like it's Pretty not nice. a, yeah. it, these strategy games are not like, they're, it's a game which requires skill yeah. and like that, like if you have a strategic mind, it's it's a yeah. play place. And I got into Texas Hold'em for a minute, dude. Online, I played online for a minute. Um, so so yeah, uh, for whatever reason, I I I got into that world. But I, but I quit. I swore cold turkey off of it in high school because I decided I I don't know. I just wanted like a an actual circle of friends who were like my age and who are who are like like me, and I wanted like something else i wanted women to talk to me mostly i think i wanted women to talk to me if i'm being honest i was being what what age are you in high school 13 14 i just wanted it uh but i had no hobbies no skills no sports i was bad at school i was not good at anything so i decided that i was going to get jacked um shredded peeled diced caught up baby okay osama bin lifted you know what i'm saying yeah right uh so i I um, but 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 the do, do you know how much I weighed? I weighed a hundred and eleven pounds, and I was five ten. How tall are you? Five eleven. Yeah, five eleven. I was five eleven, and did I just say five ten? Yeah, I was five eleven. Uh, and I weighed a hundred eleven pounds. How much do you weigh? Uh, one ninety. Yeah, I weighed hundred eleven pounds. So, just like half of you did. Yeah. Yeah. It was gross. I was the skinniest kid. So it's like, okay, how how do I become a fucking bodybuilder? I mean, for for context, one hundred fifteen pounds. I Googled this, is the weight of the average female K-pop star, Korean girl. Okay. Tiny Asian lady. I weighed the exact same amount of her. If on her birthday, like her friends handed her too many balloons. That's, I weighed exactly that. This, this story is about (laughs) you becoming a bodybuilder. It's my origin story, baby. All right. Buckle up. All right. So I was like, how the fuck? I mean, do you want to know what the deeper st- It's not about I mean, me becoming a body, going, but it's the going, story just, of a young man coming into himself. Okay. Okay. It's the story of a friend of yours, a close friend of yours becoming who he is today. Yeah. That's one way to frame it. Right. All right. So, um, so it's like, how could I be a bodybuilder if I'm like this? Skinny? So I, I went to YouTube and, um, this is so ridiculous. Do you know who's, uh, okay. So I Googled like how to, get jacked and i clicked on the who, first youtube who video you looking at? I, I didn't i didn't know anything about this world so i just like my first this was my introduction into like the world of bodybuilding the first video was this guy named ziz you don't know ziz uh, uh very few people do but it's part of a very niche subculture there's a this aesthetic movement that happened in the mid 2000s i was a young man and i clicked on this video i had no idea who it was but he was jacked shredded dude tan he was shirts off he was just talking directly to the camera and I, I'm like, okay, he's going to tell me how to get jacked. So I play it. And he says, are you mad, cunt? You mad at me? I'm a shredded cunt. You mad, bro? He's an Australian guy. I was like, did this guy just call me a cunt? <laughs> I don't <laughs> He called me a cunt. And um, later on, I learned that in Australia, it's like calling somebody cunts, like the equivalent in America of calling somebody a cunt, but they just like don't care over there. They don't give a fuck. Yeah. And... Uh, I'm like, I'm like, why is it this guy calling me a cunt? I'm, I'm like mad at him. He's like calling me a cunt, but I keep watching it like out of hate. He's like, I can feel it, man. You're fucking, you're fucking mad. I can feel it in you. You're, you're, you're a mad cunt. I'm like this guy's in my head. He knows I'm mad. And he goes, well, I got news for you, mate. You can be a sick cunt too. You can be a sick cunt, bro. You can be a fucking sick cunt, motherfucker. And he shows me. Before pictures of him, he's skinnier than I am in that state. And he's the, he's like a competitive world of Warcraft player. He's a gamer, his before pictures. So I'm like, oh, this guy, that, that guy is this guy. And it all, I was like looking at who he is now. You'd never guess that he, he had that background. So I went from like hating this dude to I'll do anything he says. His name is Ziz. And you can like find him on YouTube. He like, that's his whole video. That's all his videos is just him going, you mad, you mad cunt, you mad, bro. Fucking mad. You mad. I'm shredded. 
You mad, bro? He's just trying to like piss people off, get attention. He got a lot of attention and millions of views, his videos, millions, tens of millions, probably. Um, but he, he died, uh, when he was 22, they found his body in a sauna in an LA fitness in Thailand. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> That's my idol, dude. He what do you what's so what's funny son, about the, the man sauna in LA like that's where he, yeah dude that's where the what, man I looked happened? up to died what happened he was doing cocaine pre-workout what what the irony of him dying in the sauna at LA fitness is out of control dude. I don't see anything funny about it dude he was my friend and he he was a big influence he was on not me. your friend he called you a con he did but it was a term of endearment I didn't know that back then I know it now. Rest in peace, dude. We're all going to make it, bro. He would say that. He would end all his videos. We're this all going to make it, bro. This is the story you're going to do for Risk? I mean, I don't... I'm just saying shit right now. I don't know okay. what I'm going to, like, okay. do. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know how to say cut that many times in front of, like, a fucking Risk audience. But he said it. I don't know. He said it. I Go mean, back I and watch like the, the, like, the parallels between... You and this guy, like both having that. Yeah, it was a big deal to me. Yeah, well, I can oh, tell. I I didn't tell you. We got cut off from this, but I told you about Greg Plitt, right? Uh, the fitness model skydiver. Mm -hmm. He also died. Uh, he got, but he he got run over by a train trying to outrun it for an energy drink commercial. So he chugged. <laughs> no. It wasn't that good of an energy drink. No, I Dude, know. I got to crack a window. Hold on. I'm just Please. keep talking. All right. Um, <laughs> yeah, dude. I, so he, yeah, he, he fucking shotgun these energy drinks. And then he was, he felt like a super dude. I mean, this guy's life was like perfect, dude. He was like on the cover of men's fitness and just like, dating just like the hottest girl and he's like i could outrun a train that's a fucking lesson in humility dude don't get so big that you think you can outrun automobile yeah <laughs> <laughs> so where did this how did this end um how did what end how so the story ends with you like that guy dying no the story hasn't even started really jesus I'm just christ like, I'm Jesse. how long is it supposed to <laughs> you've, be you've been telling this story for like 10 minutes now. oh no it's like it hasn't started i haven't even picked up a weight yet oh my god um but i mean interject talk to me about it dude i'm trying to feel it out <laughs> so i so so yeah so ziz died in a uh, sauna in an alley fitness in thailand this is like the same thing that happened with Baruji, where he came on and he like starts talking and literally 20 minutes later I go, so what? And then he just answers the most simplest question. It's like, it took 20 minutes to get there. Yeah. I mean, I'll say this. I don't know anything about stories or storytelling. I, I told you, <laughs> did I tell you this before? I used to think telling a story was rude. Really? Yeah. I used to, until like literally last year, I used to think when some people told stories, they were trying to monopolize the conversation. So I would I never tell a story. there's some validity to that. Yeah. Like my mom feels the same way. She fucking hates stories. Mm. Now I love them. Now I think they're a good way to connect. But I'm, but the consequence of me thinking that my whole life is that I don't know the, how to do it. So I think I was around some really strong storytellers. Yeah. Like you they, love stories. It, well, I've listened to a lot of them on here too, Yeah, but it's, I like when they come full circle and like, there's, there's just like the, I think, I don't know, Berbiglia, he wrote a book. It was fucking really good. I read that before I got into stand oh, nice. up and like just good storytelling. It's like, it's comedy, but it doesn't fit. You don't feel the bit through. Yeah. It. I mean, that's the type of stand up I respect the most. That's why I, I, I have an interest in storytelling now because of that um because i don't i don't like it when you can feel the joke coming okay so let's talk through the rest of this then right so, so you basically you get into bodybuilding so now now that i see this guy so i'm like i'll do anything this guy said and he's like basically he told me to go buy a bunch of fucking supplements um so i go to a, a gnc and um and i i buy this supplement it, those people are talking i have to close it, close it. go ahead keep talking <sighs> shut up you guys their children, right? Dude. Yeah, where do you live, dude? The things I saw on my drive here alone, I mean, the only good thing about where you live is you're right next to 
uh, Birria Tijuana, which is actually like my favorite oh, I keep restaurant. Hearing. You you've been you've gone uh, up they, here for no, this. Beer, uh, they always have one in Birian, hmm. and it's like the best. It's it's like the best place I could eat. Keon told me about it. It's the best, the best. Okay. Um, and uh, I do have somebody coming over for another episode here in not too long. So okay, how do we? Oh, okay, okay. Let's get some kind of closure okay, on okay, this. Okay, okay. Here's I'll just do a, a a montage for the next few years. Yeah, I buy I I buy jacked three uh, and then. Do you ever t- and I hadn't taken a drug in my life, and then I, Jack I took 3D Jack. was not a supplement. No, it wasn't. It was I, how different. many scoops did you take? All of them. Like Dude, when you straight, before the, you worked okay, out, how fir- many scoops? The, well, the first time I ever did it, I took three scoops, full dose. Right? Yeah. It says like take one to three, take one, take half a scoop to assess your tolerance first. Yeah. Right? I'd never drank in coffee at this point. I'd never done any drugs. Never smoked weed. Jack 3D was for anyone listening. It was a supplement that got banned because mm-hmm. a guy in the army ran after taking it and had a heart attack. Dude, no, not only that, multiple people in Afghanistan died from cerebral hemorrhaging. Yeah. Their brains exploded. Yeah. They, well, you know how they got that too, right? What? Like, I, I read about it at all these. I, it's so funny. You know, this I've, every time I've talked about this, everybody's been like, what the fuck? You know, I, exactly what I I'm know talking exactly about. Exactly. <laughs> I'll tell you why though too. Is, oh my god, wild! Um, they used to keep it on army bases. Like there was like a almost like a supplement portion yeah. for because they all work out. Yeah, and shit right, like right. That. And Jacked was there, and I was I use Jacked almost every day. Yeah, me too. I, what happened I was when day. I was I like got healthy again after that accident or whatever. I had forgotten about Jack. Yeah. When I was drinking still, I used to take Jack. Yeah, dude. And then I fucking stopped, and then I came back to it. It was like, oh, my God. There's it was like this. Well, you, it got banned because it's basically the same compound as methamphetamine. Right. Well, so the the supplement is still around. You can still buy it, but it doesn't have the compound anymore. It's The compound is called 1,3-dimethylamine. Yeah. And that was the shit, dude. P- and people still, to this day, buy it. European punks buy it before warehouse raves. They take it as like a MDMA substitute. Yeah. So you're basically rolling. So I basically took. F- so I, so I, I take- used to play basketball on it, dude. I used to, I took the SATs on it, <laughs> <laughs> dude. You it it was different where most like caffeine, uh, B12, all that type of stuff. You have an aggressive like spike and then aggressive come down. Mm-hmm. It sustained like there was sort of like if you took it too late in the day, you're just not going to be sleeping. Dude, I had to wear two pairs of compression shorts to the gym because my dick was hard the whole time. Really? Yes. I had to like I lift hard dick the whole time. I had to like. That's the weirdest thing I've heard on this podcast. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I kept it. I kept it cool. I I wore enough compression shorts. I don't think that registered in my brain when you said it initially. Hard dick. Full mast. I re- on the verge of exploding, dude. I felt like my balls were getting like while I was squatting. I don't know how to respond. To that. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you. I thought maybe you would relate, but clearly, I like, remember get having the opposite effect. What? Yeah. Oh. Well, because it has nitrous oxide, which is like yeah. you know the blood dilating. It's like what people take when they want to make their dick side. Yeah, GNC is a dangerous place Cessful. for a young. Especially in the 2000s, back when like nobody regulated that shit. Like now, they people still really they don't, don't. They don't. They don't. It's not a. It's not covered by the FDA. No, it's not, it's, dude. The shit I used to buy, and then like it would just get banned later. It's crazy. I was 16, dude. Did you ever take Animal Stag? Yeah. yeah. Or Animal Pack. pack. Yeah. Animal Pack. That was my, my first vitamin. I had a buddy in college that I had posters. started taking, um, like over-the-counter testosterone yeah and he took so much of it he ended up in the fucking hospital yeah dude and we used to play quarters in college like just drinking and you know no, right 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 he would lactate when he got hammered nice. that's like we he would have pools of fluid under his nipples and he he, he <laughs> 
he would just be like, I, yeah, I know I'm having a good night. <laughs> it just gets super weird. Dude, with it. do you collect it? I, pay, I used to pay a pretty penny for breast milk, dude. I used to go to the dark web and buy breast milk, not from men, but from women, because I thought. Do you not do that? What the fuck are you talking I about? I used to right go to now? the dark web and I used to buy breast milk in bulk because there's a sub section of the bodybuilding internet that said that it, like there's something like it's like the most nutrient dense compound. You drank breast milk? Yeah, I got salmonella a bunch of times, but and then I stopped <laughs> and then I stopped. It was a mistake. But but I was a young man and I'm I'm it's been t- Time has passed. I'm a different man. What the fuck, dude? How did it- What do what you haven't you haven't fucking partied, bro? You don't like the party? How have you not talked about that on stage? What? That you bought and drank. I've never heard of anybody doing yeah, that. Well, Google it. There's a thousands of men who do it. There was a documentary on a dude where, where they went to his house and they opened his fridge and just vials full of breast milk. I, I felt like I had... If you talked about this, you'd get the same response I got this week where I started talking about Rocco Sofredi. Who that? Who's that? He... uh he had a documentary on Netflix, but Rocco is like a porn star oh. and he and I have the same birthday. You seem like you're friends with like male porn stars. That's your vibe. It's, I just knew Rocco and the name of the documentary was Rocco in the opening scene. It's the most aggressive start to a documentary I've ever seen. What, just fucking? It's a pure black screen and it just fades in black and white and there's just the sound of water coming down. And it's a close up of his dick in the shower. Jesus. And it's just bouncing off of his dick. And the whole <laughs> the whole documentary is about him and his life as a male oh porn God. star. But it starts with his, like I don't think you can that's the most aggressive start no, to a documentary. That's the only way you can start it. What you're gonna start a stand up documentary with not the guy on stage doing stand up? Yeah, dude. You're gonna but zoom him in on by it. himself with in his, the shower. Yeah, with his tools. Just his dick. I mean, it's he's tools he's of an the trade, artist. Dude. He's an artist. Yeah. Yeah. We have the same birthday though. <laughs> he's a Taurus. In another life, dude, you'd be you look like a lot of the dudes who are like tangentially in what I jerk off to. Not because you're in it, but be, but you just happen to be in it. Okay, dude, That's we got to land this story. I can't look you in the eyes for too long because it reminds, it It just doesn't, yeah, it doesn't help me. It's like taking Jack 3D. Yeah, so Jack 3D, dude, that's so cool that you can actually fucking know. So so that was the, I got addicted, so addicted to it, dude. Oh, yeah. So addicted, because I would take it every day not knowing shit. And then when they took out that ingredient, I was like, oh, I'm going through amphetamine withdrawal or whatever yeah. it is. It's like straight, like I was like, so I started taking Adderall, tons of it. Before workouts and stuff. Uh, yeah, then I bought a bunch of breast... Oh, so I'll, I'll just list some stuff I did. So that, I bought a bunch of breast milk off the dark web. That didn't work out. I used to squeeze onion juice into my tuna shakes. And then I, I threw up. And now I, I can't even be around the fish. I can't even be around the fish. I can't even be on... I, last time I got went to Hawaii, dude, I started just getting sick the second I landed. Oh. I'm like shuddering. Where the fuck does this story go? <laughs> like, what's the point of this? Oh, the point is this. The point is this. Uh, I entered a bodybuilding competition. You know, you've heard of it. Yeah. Anchor Splash. So I'm training for this thing. Oh, one of the other things I got into was raw milk. So I used to buy raw milk, which is milk that's not been homogenized or pasteurized. It's illegal in most states, more illegal than weed. And I thought, it, like, that's another thing. Like, Ziz was like, drink this, you, mate. It'll I make you jack. I talked about this the last time you came on. Just this Did milk I? stuff. Right, yeah. But um, but it, it kind of culminated in this moment where I was at the frat one night. I was prepping for this bodybuilding competition. There's a party. And, and do you have something like this? This, like, sick affliction where, like, I, I got off on this idea that, like, while everybody else is partying, like, these fucking undisciplined fucks, they're not sacrificing anything. I'm, like, in my room just lonely, just, like, starving myself. I'm, like, these fucking losers. They're fucking pussies. I couldn't sleep, though. I was on amphetamines, and it was 1 a.m. in the party, <laughs> the mu- and the, the music was too loud. So I drove to Arlington. You know Arlington. You're fucking yeah. close to yeah. it, here, dude. In an hour north of Seattle to this farm that just had a refrigerator on the... And you can go up to it. It's... It's not a store any hour of the day. You just put $20 in a box next to it. I bought a bunch of raw milk, gallons of it, and I'm feeling good because I, I love this raw milk. And I drive back. I'm about to get on the freeway, and I crash my car. I fell asleep at the wheel. I fell asleep while driving. 
because when you're on that much amphetamine and like that much jacked it uh you don't know if you're asleep or awake dude i was like just like floating i like didn't know if i was energized or if i was tired at this point i was like starving myself and i fucking woke up i woke up and i was like oh fuck i crashed I and had i gone on the highway i would have died for sure um and thank god i crashed into a bush and I, you're not super active on tiktok but a bunch of bushes have recently gone viral for resembling like a thick juicy ass you like you fucking like tap it and go and get some give to it so i crashed into it and it had some bounce so i like was fine but my car was like damaged uh covered in covered in milk <laughs> I'm sorry. Covered in milk, dude. Had That's I had, such a weird story. had I had I fucking died, dude. They would have found my body covered in milk, or if they found me like a week later, covered in yogurt, bro. How embarrassing would that have been? Just to be like covered in just like gross, like just fermenting fucking dairy. It's incredibly weird that you drove an hour, probably at the weirdest hour of one a.m. Yeah. yeah, to go get milk. Yeah, like an hour away. Like, what is raw milk? like texture wise different no it like there's an argument online uh this isn't you know the pseudoscience i was big into pseudoscience back then I, if it was science i didn't want anything to do with it i was pro pseudoscience so there's like if you don't heat it there are like living organisms in it that like make you get jacked they like funnel into your muscle and try to get you big did you digest it well <sighs> personally i don't think I, for a couple of years, I forgot that you could have a non-liquid shit. I thought, I thought you were just, pe I thought you just peed yeah. out your ass. Cause I was drinking half a gallon to a gallon a day. You, do you ever do go mad gallon of milk a day? No, oh. I, I, I saw people doing Yeah. That. So I was doing go mad for a while. Dude, isn't that crazy? That was like a viral, like weight gain diet. Like, could you imagine somebody today being like, <laughs> <laughs> I remember we were out playing basketball. I was like 10 years old and the biggest guy in our neighborhood was just carrying around a gallon. Yeah, of that milk. was me, dude. Lukewarm room temperature. And it, it like, it was, it was like the big or whatever. Yeah. I guess the, is the gallon the small one or like the, the gallons, this, the, the tall skinny yeah, one, that's, that's half, half gallon. Okay. Yeah. He had the full one. That's like, what? How many grams of protein? Dude, it's like it? thousands of calories. It's like 2,000 calories, I think. Yeah, that roughly. makes sense if it's yeah. a day. It was whole milk, too. It was whole milk. Okay, so how does this end? We have to wrap up here. Dude. Right, okay. Um, <laughs> almost died uh, and joined, you know, my colleagues Ziz and Greg Plitt in the list of extremely comical ways to die. I mm -hmm. could have joined them, um, but I did not. So instead, I crawled into this fucking bodybuilding competition, and I looked great, dude. I looked good. It was max. I was maximally fuckable. You would have fucked me. You would have fucked Did me. Did you win? Lost. Twenty six year old dude on steroids competing against a bunch of nineteen year old <laughs> boys in this fraternity what bodybuilding position, competition. What position did you get? I don't even know. You dude. didn't even place. No, no. This guy roided out ex marine. Joined college late. Competing a bunch of, against a bunch of boys, he was on steroids. He was huge. I wasn't even close. I was so sad. Then I gave up bodybuilding, dude. I was done with it. I was done. All right, that can be what happens. <laughs> what? You don't like passion? <laughs> no, I I actually think the way that ended is just so funny. <laughs> like, I appreciate you coming on, man. Thank you, dude. I I love you, man. Thanks for having me. Love you too. How is there anything you want to plug? Uh, just social media yeah. stuff. If you got upcoming shows, this isn't going to come out for a couple of weeks, but yeah. At Jesse Warren, bro, Instagram. And yeah. He'll TikTok. follow you back too. Uh, if you look at how many followers are, he's very good about that. Yeah. Adam is, uh, making fun of me. Dude, you guys all make fun of me cause I follow zero people. It's not cause I think like I'm like above you. That's not why I think I'm above you. Uh, I, I follow zero people cause I don't want a news feed. I find it distracting. And I, dude, do you think it benefits you to fucking scroll through Instagram? Do you, do you think that's good for you? No. Okay. Case in point. I, I, I was curious nobody. if the reason behind that was for the algorithm or if it was no, for nothing like was, that. Okay. Just personal. Really I respect personal. that. Yeah. I mean, I, it looks incredibly douchey. Yeah. 
but yeah. I respect the reason why you're yeah. doing it. Right. Maybe people if you articulated that. I don't have to, to justify myself. Why would I have to tell people that? Because you're not an asshole and the assumption would be that you're just I know, but conceited. D- isn't that lame though to be like, let them assume, dude, because why would I, like it's playing defense like that, being like, no, no, it's not because of that. It's because of it. Like, I don't want to, if people make assumptions, then that, then that's on them. Yeah. Dude, thank you for coming on. Pleasure, my friend. Just uh, thanks again, everybody, for listening. If you enjoyed the episode, please make sure to rate and review us. And if you're watching us on YouTube, hit that notifications bell so you don't miss any of our upcoming content. Uh, Subscribe to us, like this episode, and please throw a comment in for Jesse or myself. We'll do our best to get them answered. And as always, follow us on Instagram at FNFPod. For additional content, we're going to leave you with Jaga. I just make the waves, I don't write them. I can hear the lyrics in my spirit as I write them. Why you want to walk and talk just like them? I can't get caught up in all the hype and the excitement. I just make the waves, I don't write them. I can hear the lyrics in my spirit as I write them. Why you want to walk and talk just like them? I can't get caught up in all the hype and the excitement. My way, Welcome to my way, fool. My way, fool. Welcome to my way, fool.